Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess. Welcome to Lab Exercise 7. We're going to see how to build and run a model using Model Builder. Nice way to automate processes where you can string several tools together and just run the whole batch at once. We're going to learn how to set model component parameters. We're going to learn how to delete intermediate data. Now this particular model is going to identify a portion of the rock project unit that we created in earlier lab exercise. And within that unit it's going to find the regions that are within a half mile of a particular road from the Coconino Roadmap called Fry Park Road. Our general strategy here will be to first select the polylines that represent Fry Park Road, then we're going to build the buffer around it, and then we're going to clip that buffer to the rock project unit. So three steps in the process. First up, let's make sure that our default geodatabase is set correctly. I can tell it has the little house. So remember you're going to be turning this in, so make sure you use the same geodatabase you've been using in the other labs. I'm going to make a new map. We're going to add the feature class Rock Project Unit that you created when you ran that Dissolve tool a little while ago. So that should be in our default geodatabase. That would be under Databases. Here's our default. Sure enough, we got our Rock Project Unit. Let's load that up. Okay, just single polygon. Now let's add the layer Coconino Motor Vehicle Use Map Roads. And just to make it clear where Fry Park Road is, I'm going to turn on the labels for this. I'm going to go to Labeling. I'm going to turn the labels on. There it is, Fry Park right there. I'm, just for aesthetic purposes, I'm going to have the labels curve where the road curves. I'm, why not, right? We can set it off from the line by a little bit here. You can have fun with this kind of stuff. Anyway, we're, we're interested in Fry Park Road in particular. Now, in order to do this in Model Builder, first we have to create a new toolbox and we have to create a model within that toolbox. Models have to be located inside toolboxes. Now, you need to make this in the default geo database that you are going to be turning in. So let's go to catalog. Let's go find our default geo database, open it up. Here's all the data we've been generating in the earlier lab exercise. So you should have all of this in here. Okay, to make a new toolbox, first you right click in here, then just go new and toolbox. We'll name it according to your name. All right, so we have a new toolbox. We also need to be able to see this toolbox from our project. Um, project here has a section for toolboxes, but if we open it up, it just has the original default. So we need to add this. So we could right click on it, go to add to project, and now it gets added to our project. So it's in the list of toolboxes that our project can see. Now we need to add a model to it so we can either open up the toolbox the way we have it here and just right click in the toolbox somewhere and go to new model. You can also click on it from the outside. From here you can right click on it and go to new model. In either case it will make a new model within that toolbox. So now we have a new model. It is opened in the model builder window. We need to change the name of it to our name. So we get to that in the Model Builder tab and the Model Properties window. Open that up. Let's us set a name and a label. The label is what shows up within the in catalog. Here's what you see visible. Then the name is, is an, kind of an internal object. There's, there's rules about naming it. It can only contain numbers and letters. It can't contain spaces or underscores or anything. So there's rules about setting a name. But anyway, let's go ahead and name the model buffer and the label that we'll see in the toolbox within catalog will be our name buffer. All right, hit OK. Now let's save what we've done so far. Now if we open up our toolbox, we will see our model right here. OK, 
Okay, next step, let's start building our model. So it has three steps. Remember, first we have to select the roads named Fry Park, then we have to build a half mile buffer, then we use the clip tool. So first step is to do that selection. If your model is not already open, go ahead and open it. You can open a model by right clicking on it and going to edit. We have the model builder ribbon open right now. So to get to tools, we can just click on the little toolbox in the model builder ribbon. Let's us start picking tools just the same way we did when we were running analytical tools. Okay, the first tool we're going to do is the tool called select layer by attribute. We can just type that into the search box and it'll find it. Now here's the tool. Now it's important when I clicked on it, it opened up to start setting these parameters. We don't want to run the tool here. We're not running it. We need to just see the tool and drag it into the model. When it's in the model, then we'll start setting parameters and arguments about the way it runs. So here we have the tool in our model. Notice that the tool symbols are gray. That means that the tool is not ready to run yet. Now we're going to set the parameters, double click on the select, by, select layer by attribute process there. The input roads will be the Coconino National Forest Motor U Vehicle Use Map roads. We can just pop that in there. We're going to make a new selection on them where the road name is equal to Fry Park. So name is equal to, then we can just start typing F-R-Y. There we go, Fry Park. Hit OK. And now the tool is set up to run. So it takes on color and this, this indicates that it's ready. The dark blue oval here, the oval means it's data set. The rectangle means it's a tool or a process. Dark blue oval means it's input data green oval means it's output data. This is the data it is producing and it is a data set. A light blue oval means that it is data that is being produced but it's just a, a value. It's a number or a text value. It's not a data set. Now we're not actually using the count output but the tool is producing it anyway. So it'll produce it. It'll just sort of evaporate into the ether. Turns out there's no way to actually delete that without deleting the tool itself. So we just leave it there. It's just a little bit of sloppiness. All right, that particular portion of our model is ready to run. Now we want to bring in the buffer tool. So we have Fry Park Road going to be selected. We just need to build a buffer around that single road. Or actually, it's two road polylines. So let's go find the buffer tool. Here it is. So we just drag it down into Model Builder. Now we need to tell it to, that the output from the selection tool is the input to the buffer tool. Now for me, you can open this up and you could set the input features, but I get a little confused about which of these is the output from this. That's just, just me, maybe. Anyway, for me, it's a little easier, just to be clear, I can click on this drag a line into the buffer tool. When I let up off of the mouse key, it asks me which input parameter do I want this to be. And this will be the input features. All right. So now when we double click on this, this part is already filled out for us. It's filled out with the right data set. Okay, let's fill out the rest of the buffer tool. We want to buffer one half US survey miles so the distance will be 0.5 US survey miles. Side type is full. That means we're buffering both sides of the road. We're going to have round ends on it. The method will be geodesic because that's more accurate. And the dissolve type is dissolve all features. So we'll just get a single buffer polygon. Hit OK. And now the buffer tool is all set up to run. So it's going to select features make that here. It's going to buffer those selected features and now we have a new data set that will be that buffer polygon. This takes us two-thirds of the way through. Now we have to clip the buffer polygon to our rock project unit. So let's open up the clip tool. 
clip is in analysis tools extract clip you can just get it here and drag it out so we could again just draw a line up here and that will be the input features these are the things that will be clipped now we need to set the clip features the the data set that will act as the cookie cutter and that was the rock project unit we loaded up a little bit ago throw that into the clip features the output should be named rock project buffer and we want to make sure that it is being saved to the automation lab all right so all is well there now that tool is set up and ready to go now that looks like a spider web doesn't it a nice thing about this uh, model builder is that it actually has some GISE tools that operate in graph space and they can organize these in a way that's a lot easier to read. So let's do that. Let me close this tool thing here. The auto layout will put these in a more uh, readable way. Just click that. It lines them all up nice and pretty. You can also fit it to the window. and That will zoom it if you need to zoom it. If it was like this, we could hit fit to window and it squeeze it all in there just fine. All right, so our model looks good. It's no gray regions. One thing we want to make sure of is that this data set, we're creating a buffer and then we're clipping that buffer. And this is the real output here that we care about. This is just an intermediate step in the, in the path and we, we don't want to hold on to that. So we can right click on it and make sure that it's checked as intermediate data. The green check mark means that it is currently set as intermediate data, and that's good. Because later on, when we run the tool, we can click the intermediate, and that'll get rid of all the data sets that were declared as intermediate. This output, we'd kind of like to add that to the map after it runs, so let's just turn that on to add to display. See, now it has a check mark, so when the tool finishes, when the model finishes, it'll pop that into our map. We can click the validate. It just checks to make sure parameters are legal. It's I found this validate thing is actually a little bit easy to fool. You can set it up to crash and the validate won't catch it. But go ahead and click validate anyway. If anything's really weirdly wrong, it'll tell you. So it was successfully validated. Now we're ready to go. I'm going to hit run. As it runs, it'll even show you what tool is run as each step. As a tool is being run, it turns red. When it finishes being run, it'll get a little shadow underneath that. So go ahead and watch that as it happens. And I'm going to open, shift back to our map over here so we can see the new data set appear when it, when it, uh, when it finishes. All right, hit run. Okay, fairly quick operation. Here's a little report on what it did, if you'd really like to take a look at that. We have our new feature class added to our map. Let me move this out of the way. Now, it symbolized it the same way Rock Projects is not obvious. If I change the color of that, let's change it so something catches your eye a little. All right. So this is it. This is the portion of the area within one half mile of Fry Park Road that is within the polygon, within our management unit. Now we discussed the fact that the Coconino buffer here was declared to be intermediate data, and we, we wanted to get rid of intermediate data when we were done with it. If we go back to the catalog view and look in our default geodatabase, in here refresh the window we'll see this buffer is in the geodatabase this was intermediate we don't want it there so we come back to the model builder window that brings back our model builder toolbar we hit the clear intermediate we hit that we'll see that road buffer disappear after we refresh the window 
see it is now gone now with a single feature class like that of course it would have been easier enough just to select it and hit delete but that uh, function here to delete intermediate data sets becomes really useful when you have maybe dozens or hundreds of intermediate data sets that are created over the course of the model and that's not unusual so that that's really nice to be able to get rid of them all at one go all right and that's all all there is to it we we got to make sure we remember to save our model. So let's hit save. All right, so our model is a successful model. It works just fine. And that's it for this lab exercise here. Thanks so much, everybody.